Riders, welcome back to Sands Bikes, where you know we only talk e-bikes, and today is the sixth and final episode of the Levo Dream Build series, where we take a base model Levo up to race-ready spec. And in the final episode, we are looking at derailleur, chain, cranks, and a few extra bits and pieces to finish off the Dream Build. And before we crack on, let's thank you riders because we just hit 30,000 subscribers at Sam's Bikes. Absolutely blown away. So I thank each and every one of you riders out there. And to celebrate, if you haven't entered the Dream Build Series giveaway, we are giving away over 3,000 euros worth of loot. Head back to the first video, see how to enter, and good luck. You will be watching this video on Saturday at 6 p.m. And all entries will be valid up until 12 p.m. on Saturday night. And then Barry and I will put everything on a spreadsheet and next week we're gonna be drawing all the winners. So riders, good luck. And let's thank those sponsors for making all possible at Sands Bikes. Schwabi, making amazing electric mountain bike tires. Quadlock, the best smartphone solution for your mountain bike, your home office. And Insta360, the smallest action camera on the market. And the new X3, which I'm gonna be putting through its paces in the coming weeks. Now onto all the new bits and riders. This has been so much work. I hate to think how much it's cost me all. I will do a video coming on all the breakdown of how much it costs, but also I've learned so much. As I've said before, I'm not the greatest mechanic, so I've learned how to actually build my bike and it has been quite a steep learning curve. But anyway, are we ready? Last bits and pieces. Ooh, there we go, there we go. And first up, there has been one stuff up. I ordered the wrong bars. The joystick have too much of a sweep for me, so they're coming off. And they also clashed a little bit with the color scheme I was going with. So these are the Bren Dog, the BF800s, and these look awesome. I actually wanted to say, riders, I couldn't find these anywhere. I ordered them in England. And what a stuff up Brexit has been. These bars, cost me over 30 euros to bring to Europe, which is an absolute shame. But anyway, I've got these bars. And riders, I definitely listened to you legends out there because when I did the new brakes, you a lot of you said in the comments, I should be going a 220 rotor. So I've got a 223 mil rotor here. And I will be doing some back-to-back -back benchmark testing on a 203 and a 223 just to see what those differences are. And I also want to say, this is my dream build and also all the stuff on this bike, I'm gonna be testing and reviewing. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. You should be already because it's where we do all the e-bike stuff. But yeah, those reviews will be coming. And for all the riders out there that want Mastermind on their Levo, well, this is a hack for you riders. So I've got myself a Garmin Edge 530 which is awesome, nice size, color display. And also, this is a 3D printed like mount that goes above your TCU. And I think it's gonna put it in the perfect position to have a look at your garment. And also, massive shout out to Haman, absolute legend, helped me so much with this build. I call him my technical advisor. This is a prototype right now. Riders, put a note in the comments if you would like one we're gonna just change that a little bit because it's not perfect right now. But once we get it perfect, it's gonna be a free downloadable file so you can get them 3D printed locally. And next up, we have a little bit of bling for the bike. Some Hope 155 e-bike cranks. And I think you agree, riders, this would definitely work in well with the polished aluminum hubs from Industry 9 and the stem. And the next three parts have been stolen off my Kineva SL or borrowed because I won't be needing it because in two weeks, Bear and I are heading off to Australia for three months. So I'm gonna be taking the dream build. So first up, we've got a wireless dropper from RockShox. A bit of bling here, not really necessary, but I do love it. And a wireless SRAM XX1 Axis derailleur, which is more bling as well, also not really necessary, and the cassette and chain. So they're all the bling bits, we're gonna install them in a bit, but why did I go this last part of the setup? Well, first up, the wireless derailleur, like this is the top model one, I was actually trying to get the GX one, which is about half the price. 
Now, for me, a derailleur is kind of like not hugely important, but these are bloody strong. So if you hit a rock, so like you're, you're smashing down a downhill and you hit a rock, this will actually push out of the way. And the other day, Haman and I were riding out in Thethadia, and he had a not, he was not threading the needle very well. He hit a big rock and he doesn't have wireless and it was game over, broken derailleur. So this would be a good upgrade if you do break a lot of derailleurs. And with the dropper, a dropper really is a dropper. It's just designed to get the seat out of the way when you're going to do enduro or downhill trails. But what I like about the wireless one, it's so quick to activate and you can actually do like micro adjustments very quickly. So if you're climbing something technical, you can just lift the seat a little bit. I actually really love the wireless dropper and I kind of think I've been spoiled with the other bikes I've had, so I had to put up my dream build. And then onto the Bling Hope Cranks, 155. Now riders, we have a motor, we have loads of power and loads of torque. I kind of have been thinking about getting shorter cranks for a while. I think 160 are fine, definitely better than 165 or 170. But 155 is just a little bit shorter. It's gonna give you a little bit more clearance and these look absolutely blinging. So these are all blinging parts. But what are other options on the market when ordering some aftermarket parts for your e-bike? Starting off with the derailleur and group set. So I like SRAM 12 speed derailleurs. I think they're a bit stronger. I think they, lead, they need less maintenance and Shimano work well as well. But I find Shimano, it needs to be very clean all the time and very well lubed. Just prefer SRAM. And also, if you're looking at it, a GX uh, wireless is probably the best bang for your buck if you're gonna go wireless. And also, like a GX sort of normal standard cable GX derailleur is awesome. I don't really see the point in going all the top end, but I had this on the Kinevo, so that's what I'm putting on. And then onto the Bling Hope cranks. There are loads of options for aftermarket cranks. I'm not sure how many brands make 155 cranks. Could be a few out there. I wanted these ones because they match the bike and they just look really cool. A little bit expensive. These were 230 euros, I believe. Now, back in the BMX days, I know I always talk about BMX. Cranks were really important because you were going from zero to 100% straight away and you couldn't get like the flex of the crank. But because the power's coming from the motor, cranks on e-bikes really aren't that important. You don't really need a stiff set of cranks. So I'm gonna say, if you wanna try 155s, if you wanna go bling, go these, it, whatever cranks you find are gonna get the job done well. Now what to look for when ordering all these parts? Well, first off, I already went over about the SRAM stuff. I think GX is fine if you wanna spend more money, I have heard on all the forums and read that, you know, that the more expensive derailers and chains uh, aren't as strong as the cheaper ones. I don't think that's true. I've never broken a chain or dented a cassette or ruined a cassette. It's more how you change because we have a lot of torque going through these motors and it's pretty much when you're changing gears, especially under load, especially when you're climbing, you want to think of your, your power through your legs as a clutch. So if you're you know, driving your car, you're not gonna change the gears without using the clutch. And it's the same on electric mountain bike. You wanna take that power off, do a clean change, make sure it's changed, and then gradually put that power down a little bit for maybe a quarter of a pedal, and you'll be fine, you won't break chains. So I would just spend what you think is acceptable. And I don't think there's that much difference between the lower derailers and the high spec derailers. And also if you have an NX group set on your e-bike at the moment and you want to upgrade, just know that the, the free hub or the free body on your hub is an 11 speed Shimano. So you're going to have to go NX or you're going to have to change your free hub body. To, and now to the cranks. I actually didn't know there was different offsets for cranks. So that was a learning experience for me. I almost ordered the wrong ones. So just check what offset you have on your motor and buy accordingly. And riders, now we're gonna fit all the bling stuff for the final episode of the Dream Build series. There's been lots of work and I thank so much for all your support. I thank you riders for hitting 30,000 subscribers, blown away. 
Now, let's fit this. And if you've been watching this series, you know I'm not a great mechanic. So the blind leading the blind here, let's go. Okay, so a quick change of the studio and these are the tools we're gonna need. Some paper towel, some grease, a strap or some big tie wraps because we need to compress the suspension when we're setting the chain length, shifter, cassette tool, a set of Allen keys here, some T Allen keys, a multi T, some smaller Allen keys, and a chain breaker. We have already taken off the cassette and chain but you'll need this if you're gonna change your chain. Some park tool bowls, which are not necessary, but I love them. And first up, we're gonna change those handlebars down, but we've already done that in the other episode, so we'll move forward from that. Okay, legends, the handlebars are on, and I forgot to mention, you probably will need a torque wrench for all the work you're gonna do on your mountain bike. If you don't have one, you should get one. So first up, we are going to put the cool Garmin mount on top of the TCU on the Specialized on the, on the Levo here. And I said, I'm an absolute legend for making this. So quite simply, we take out the original bolt, which I've already done, which is a T25, I'm pretty sure. This comes with a longer bolt and it goes over the top and we just screw it down. Now, we've got our Garmin here and it just clicks straight on. And I'd say, if you want Mastermind, you should get this because there's an application, which I'll link in the show notes, that you can pretty much get 95% of what you get from Mastermind with the Garmin. And now it's time to change those cranks over. So we get an eight mil Allen key, lefty Lucy, and you will notice that it will spin like half a turn and then it will get tight, which is kind of like a locking device. So don't worry, you just need to keep on going around it. It does feel like you're gonna strip it, but I've been told that this is how it's done. It does make me feel a bit nervous doing it like this. And the crank is off. Now, because this is a brand new bike, it's never been used, it's still got grease on there. Normally I would clean this off and re-grease it, but that's all right, we'll put these over here. And now, so we'll get the new crank and we put it on and we just tighten it up. Okay, so now we've taken the bike out of the stand, we have installed the second crank. And one thing you really wanna look for when you're putting the second crank on, that it goes exactly in line because it is possible to get it a little bit off, but we've got it perfect here. And also, I want to have a shout out to Shred Bros, which is this bike stand I've been using for the last couple of months. This has to be one of the best bike stands I've used. It's like you can move it around. It's kind of got wheels like an office chair, super stable. Definitely recommend this product. Now, why the bike is in the bike stand, we are gonna change the dropper. Okay, and one, one thing that I didn't mention, so this has come off the Kineva SL, and we're gonna use a shim. So basically, this is narrower than the seat post. So we're gonna take our seat post out. We're gonna get our shimmy, which has come out of the Kineva SL. We're just gonna slide that in, like so, and then, Grab our seat post and slide it in. Now we have a torque wrench and it is set at 5.2 here. Now riders, that is really important. If you are working on carbon fiber frames, do not over tension this because you can crack the frame here. So I'm gonna guess it's about here, but this will all be adjusted on the shakedown rod. Okay seat post in. So now we're back in the stand, a fair bit of messing around, but I'm doing it because I love you riders. Now we're going, we're gonna put the derailleur on. There's a five mil and it's quite simple. Okay, so derailleur's on, super simple. And on all bolts on the bikes, 
good bikes, they tell you how much to torque it. So this says 11 to 12, sorry, this says 10 to 12. So you get go 11, split it in the middle, we'll torque that up. There you go, nice and tall. So now it's time to take the back wheel out and put the new cassette on. So as I said, this is a brand new wheel. It has grease on it. If you are doing it with an old wheel, give this a good clean. I like to put a little bit of grease because on e-bikes, you, you can sort of really dent the free hub body. So put a bit of grease on there. So we're gonna grab the cassette, slide it on like slow, so super easy. Now we grab our shifter and our super budget cassette tool. And we just grab that and That's nice and tight. I do it hand tight. Not really, really tight because you have to take it off again. Wheel goes back in. Legend riders, I hope you're still with me. It's been a long video, I know. We're at the last stage now. And you will see I've taken out the suspension. If you've got an air spring, so an air shock in your bike, you can take the air out. But I've taken the shock out. I've got my strap, got a bit of paper towel underneath the strap so it doesn't scratch the frame. I've compressed all the suspension, so the rear chain stay is compressed, because what we're doing now is getting the chain length. Now in theory, this chain has come off Keneva SL, so it should be too long or the perfect size. So we're gonna check that out. But I already have checked it, riders, and unfortunately, it is a little bit too short, and I'll show you why. So how you measure the chain, as I said, you need to compress the suspension. You wanna bypass the derailleur. You wanna go in the biggest cog, and you wanna measure it. And I also wanna mention, riders, that this is for SRAM. Shimano has a different way of measuring the chain. So it's very hard for you to see here, but you can see that pretty much with the extension, we're gonna be about there. But what SRAM says is you should have two links. And so that's too short. So unfortunately, we're gonna to have to finish the video here. It's so typical. I'm almost ready to finish this bike. And riders, I'm really sorry we have to finish it there. I was gonna show you how to index the gears, but there are loads of videos on YouTube. I'm not the best at doing it, but when I do get really good at it, I will shoot another video. So we are there. The dream build is pretty much done. I'm gonna get that chain sorted, gonna index the gears, gonna re-bleed these brakes, and then most importantly, I'm gonna go over the whole bike and tension all the bolts again, just to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. Then I'm gonna shake down, then I'll set the suspension up. Oh, lot to do, riders, lot to do. So thank you so much for all your support. And riders, don't forget, next week we are drawing the 3,000 euro giveaway. I don't even know how many entries we've got, but there is a lot. We're gonna spreadsheet the whole thing. We're gonna set up a massive TV in here. It's gonna be all shot, not live, but it's gonna be shot in one take. So you can see I'm not doing any funny business there. And, we're gonna see you soon and stay safe out there.